In this video, we're going to look at screencastomatic.com, which I think is one of the best values in terms of screencasting tools. First, let's go to the website, screencastomatic.com. One of the things I like about Screencastomatic is that it's web based, so there's nothing to initially install on my computer. And the free account offers a generous 15 minute limit for videos, which is definitely longer than other tools. And 15 minutes is a pretty good cutoff. I typically don't like to create any videos, even over 10 minutes. So 15 minutes really helps to keep me from going too long. For this video, I'm going to stick with the free account and later I'll upgrade to the pro version so I can show you the editing tools. And for $15 a year, Screencast-O-Matic's pro account with all of the editing tools is really, I think, one of the best bargains in screencasting. Another thing I like about Screencast-O-Matic is it's just simply so easy to use. Once you visit the website, you simply click Start Recording. At this point, you'll probably be prompted to um, run the Java applet. Just go ahead and select Run. If your Java is not quite up to date, it'll prompt you to install the latest version. Then I receive a dotted line rectangle square on my screen, and it says to drag and resize this frame to surround the recording area. So at this point, when I'm recording, I will now switch over to the application, the document, the presentation, whatever I plan to use while screencasting. So here is a presentation that I'm going to use, and I will drag and resize the box to fit along my slide, and that's perfect. This is really nice for me when I'm screencasting because only the area within the rectangle or square will be recorded. And along the left, I can still see my notes. You can, of course, adjust the size of this rectangle or square to fit whatever area you wish to record on your screen. Or you can use this menu down at the bottom to record the entire screen. As you can see, my entire screen right now has a lot of tabs open, a lot of my bookmarks. It's very cluttered. So I do like the ability to focus on just what I want to record and nothing else. It's also recommended that you set your, your microphone volume before you get started. I can see that mine is picking up my voice by watching the green bars fluctuate at the bottom. When you select the microphone tool to bring up all of the microphones available on your computer, I'm not working on a laptop right now, so there's no internal mic. And so the only one it is picking up is the microphone I have connected with USB. If I have a webcam and want my picture to also display in, during the screencast so my students can see my face, I use this webcam tool. If a camera were detected, I would turn it on here. And then a small little square will appear in the lower right, typically, that I'll have my face as I'm speaking, and then the content over here. All right, once you have it all set up, simply click this record button. You get a three, two, one countdown, and go. So along the bottom, I can see the time that has elapsed since I have started recording. I'm at about five seconds right now. And I can see that my limit is 15 minutes. You can pause your recording using the pause button, switch to new slide, and use the record button to continue. While your recording is paused, you get this message right here. So you don't accidentally continue talking without turning the recording on. So I'll turn the recording back on, get a three, two, one countdown again. And again, all activity, all action inside this window is recorded. So anything I were to type, if I were to use some annotation tools to draw on here, that would be picked up. And I'll pull up just some Google drawing tools here just to do some scribbling. Of course, I could do some typing or whatever I'd like to do. I just need to make sure anything I do is inside this red recording box or it will be off screen and my students will not be able to see it. Lovely, there's my drawing. All right, when I am finished with my recording, I simply click the done button. Now I have the ability to preview my video to see what it looks like. And go. So along the bottom, I can see You'll notice that whenever I move my mouse or click with my mouse, a yellow circle follows its movements, which makes it very easy for my students to see what I'm pointing at. You also need to keep that in mind if you happen to be someone who screencasts and moves the mouse around a whole lot, that yellow circle will be visible quite often and could be distracting. So one of the things I had to train myself to do when screencasting is not to keep my hand on the mouse or it was jiggling around all the time and to really make sure that your movements with the mouse are deliberate. So after you have previewed your video, you have some options over on the right. If you select done with the recording, you'll be warned that that will delete the video file. You can choose to publish your screencast to screencastomatic.com, meaning Screencast-O-Matic would host your video instead of having your video stay on YouTube. You can publish it to a video file to have on your computer that you can then upload to YouTube later, or you can publish it directly to YouTube. And I'm going to select this option right here. When I do, I need to title my screencast. 
enter a description, any tags I'd like to. I need to choose a category. And I can adjust the privacy options, sort of, here. I can choose public or private. If I want to make it unlisted, that requires a pro account. Not a big deal. I can always make this a public video. And then later go into my YouTube video manager and change it easily to unlisted. Everything else looks good, so I will choose the Upload to YouTube button. Immediately, I get a message that I need to add my YouTube account, so it's going to launch an additional web browser or tab, and I'm okay with that. That's how my accounts will connect. Because I'm already logged into YouTube, it's recognizing that I have a couple of YouTube accounts, and I'm going to stick with my Jeffco Schools account for this video. Click Continue, Grant Access, now when I'm kicked back to this window, I simply need to click the continue button. Now I get a status window indicating how much of my video has uploaded to YouTube, and now I just need to sit and wait. Once my video has finished uploading to YouTube, I receive a message with the address where it's going to live on YouTube. If I select the back button, I can go back and additionally save my video file if I would like to to my computer, or I can publish it also to screencastomatic.com. Let's go ahead and hop over to YouTube and see how it looks. Looks great. From my video manager, you can see my Screencast-O-Matic video. I can adjust the privacy settings here from public to unlisted. I can add in an additional description or tags and save my changes. So that is how you use the free version of Screencast-O-Matic.com.